Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Today I'm going to talk about Architect Craft. It's a mod that adds uh, lots of interesting shapes that are specifically good for building different real world pieces of architecture. The whole thing starts off with this Architect's Saw Bench, which uh, you can make uh, with this recipe. Only two parts that you're probably not familiar with. One is this large pulley, which is uh, just sticks and wood. And the other is the saw blade, which is uh, ironing gets around a stick. And then combine that with the rest of the stuff, and you wind up with your saw bench. The other tool that you'll want to know about is the architect's hammer, which is made simply with this recipe, but it allows you to manipulate all the blocks that you make. Uh, so talking about blocks that you can make, once you've made your saw bench and plopped it down in the world, you get this interface when you right-click on it. And it's basically a menu of all the different kinds of blocks that the mod adds. So you can see uh, there's this roof tile, roof outer corner, inner corner, overhang, all these different things, right? And they come in these different categories. So selecting a different category, you can see all of the items in the whole mod across the whole thing. Uh, so back to this hammer here. Once you've got a block placed on the ground, and you do that just by right-clicking, it oftentimes isn't facing the direction you want. Now, it's kind of funny to start with a sphere as an example of this, but I did that because you can see this top is where all the pattern starts coming together. So it's when I right-click it, it's really easy to see how I've rotated that pattern around. And if I shift right-click, I've turned it upside down. That brown used to be on the bottom. And if I shift right click again, I've turned it sideways and I've turned it the other way and I've turned it this way and I've turned it that way. So shift right clicking will cycle through having the top face any one of the six different sides. And then uh, let's say if I've turned it this way and then I right click, it's going to rotate around the axis between its top and its bottom. And so you can see, say, that little spot right there has now moved over there. And this little spot right here has now moved over there. So it moves 90 degrees around its up-down axis. But its up-down axis may have been changed, as is the case for this one. So you kind of have to think a little bit about where the block's going to go. Anyway, so that's the hammer. Moving on. The first thing to talk about is uh, some of these roofing blocks. So here I've built an example of a little house with a triangular roof. And of course, this is not possible in normal Minecraft. So that's one of the things that this mod adds that's really, really awesome, is these great triangular roofs. But you can see it's not just a triangular shape blocked. There's a bit more structure to it than that. So if you're looking at my... Uh, my little sign there in the top center of my window, it's telling you that this is a roof overhang. So it's a specific kind of block that you get off the saw bench. And uh, this over here is a gable, which is that teeny little slice that's been added on. You can see the black box outlining where it goes. And then there's another gable up there. There's a ridge overhang at the top there and down the side. So Behind it, I've just got plain old oak wood planks, and the gable kind of covers on top of that. On the side, then, is the roof overhang, and then a little ways up, there's just a plain roof tile. And then finally, at the top, there's a gabled roof ridge. So all of these together give you this structure. So as an example, I'm going to go through and actually build one of these things here. So I've given myself the raw materials, which I'll drop here. And uh, first of all, I need that three by three base. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is put down some oak wood planks. And that's gonna be the basis of this layer right here. So I'm gonna wind up putting these overhang ends on there. And then uh, since I want the roof to have a peak like that one, I'm gonna put another set right down the middle here. So those are all the solid blocks I need. Now, I'm going to build the uh, roof overhangs, the roof tiles, and then the gabled roof ridge. So I'm going to come over here to my roofing section. I'm going to drop some wood in there. I'm going to say my gabled roof ridge is this guy. 
And uh, I happen to be in creative mode right now, so I don't need to make a whole bunch of those. But uh, if you were playing in survival, then just make as many of them as you need and provide as much materials as you want. Uh, you can see I took one oak wood planks and transformed it into four of these. So different blocks use different amounts of the materials. So this one I get two for one. So I'm going to get those. Uh, I'm going to need some of these. And uh, that should get my first stage done. So I'm going to start off with uh, these guys, this roof overhang block instead of the roof tiles. And I'm going to aim kind of low down on this tile. And it's automatically going to orient itself in the direction I want. Now, if I'd aimed at the top there, you can see it orients itself upside down. Or if I'd aimed it at the side, yeah, I think these only go up and down. So other blocks would tilt themselves sideways. So you do need to be a little careful about where you're aiming when you set these things up. So I'm going to get those ones and these ones. Now I'm going to switch to the roof tiles. And the roof tiles are different. So I'm going to just put one down here so you can see. These guys take up the full meter on each surface. You know, that's one meter long along the bottom, one meter along the side. Over here, you can see that's definitely not a full meter. The black box, the outline, is a full meter. But this has a different shape that doesn't take up the full width. Now, it goes the full height, but not the full width. So these overhangs are specially shaped to be at the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of these guys here. And now I take my gables and I drop them along the top. And they're all weird. <laughs> These are not at all the shapes that I want. So what I need to do is to take my hammer and just right click them. And it's going to cause the blocks to intelligently try to figure out what I wanted. If they guess wrong, I just keep clicking, clicking until they cycle around through all the possible shapes into the ones that you like. So here I am. I've now got the basic outline of the roof. Next, I'm going to want to go get the pieces that go on the side here, these gable overhangs. So there's a whole bunch of different types of gable overhangs, and I'm going to need all of them. So first, I will want the peak, or that ridge overhang. I'm going to drop that right in the middle. Then there's end pieces, and there's middle pieces. And this works the same way as the overhang and the tiles. So this one's not quite as long, and it's meant for lining up with those ridge overhangs, whereas this one goes the full length. And of course, there's some for the full, uh, the left and for the right, because they all uh, have a specific shape that only works in that direction. Uh, right, here we are. So now on this side, I'm going to aim at that roof ridge and click. And now I need to do this one and click. And then finally this one and click. So you can see how this one stops. It matches exactly with the roof overhang next to it. If I had, uh, oops, uh, let's see, put the roof overhang back in there. Now if I had picked the wrong one, you can see how that extends way over and it seems like sawn off at the end there. That's the difference. So instead, I want to use that one so it looks right. And then switching to the other side here, I'll put those guys on. And we'll walk around to the back here and do exactly the same thing. Oops, yeah, I aimed more at the top part of the block, and so now it's upside down. So I'm just going to take that off and aim more at the bottom part, and we're good. And there we go. So now I've got all of the basic shapes put together, which means I've almost reproduced what I've got over here, except you notice the top of this one has got that hardened clay texture on it. It looks like there's you know, shingles or a surface on the top, whereas in this one it looks like it has no shingles, or at least that, that part of the shape right there is made up of just plain wood instead of being made up of hardened clay. And so if I come over here and do the same thing, you can see, ah, yeah, that's completely different. And even the underside of it is a different color. So it looks like there's, you know, cladding on the top, which is, of course, exactly what's going on. So I'm going to take my oak wood planks out. I'm going to put some hardened clay in, but I don't want any of these shapes. The thing I want is under other, and I want to grab cladding. 
Now, many of the different types of blocks, especially the ones that have this red kind of surface on them, or you know, the blue, uh, yeah, the color doesn't really help you. They're just contrasting colors. I thought for a moment they might. Uh, anyway, different blocks will accept cladding. So gable overhangs accept cladding. If I right click on there, it's going to take one of my pieces of cladding and apply it. Overhangs take them. Uh, roof tiles take them. And of course, the ridge line takes them. And I can fill them in whatever order I want. It just takes one piece per tile that I'm cladding. And there we go. We've reproduced this little hut using all the different types of architecture blocks. So next, here's a slightly different kind of hut. Instead of having the edges come to a complete sharp vertical edge like that one does, this one has it sloped down on the sides. So I'm using a roof overhang outer corner and a roof outer corner and a ridge, a hip roof ridge to make this particular shape here. And apart from that, it's kind of all the same. So here I've got an inner corner block and a roof inner corner block and that same hip roof ridge, which can take on a lot of different shapes uh, depending upon where it is. And sometimes you have to whack it with a hammer to get it to work correctly. So I've set up the same kind of thing over here and I'll go ahead and build this guy again. Uh, I'm not going to keep building all of them, but it's a little bit instructive actually to see how some of these things are put together. So first, put down our base here. And now the wood part. And then since I want this to be a sloped roof, I don't want it to be a cantilevered or gabled roof, I'm actually going to leave a spot at the end there and just fill in this bit here. So now I've got the basic structure ready. Uh, obviously, I'm going to need to make some of my roof pieces. So I'm going to need roof tile. I'm going to need this outer roof corner for one of the corners. And I'm going to need to have this inner roof corner. So let's just get these middle bits put together. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and, whoops. Yeah, so here's an example. I clicked on the wrong spot. Now I'm in creative, so it's nothing to me to just delete them and go again. But if you did this and you didn't want to delete that block, or you know, if you use a normal tool, you'll get the block back again. But you can also use your hammer to reposition it, uh, just like that. I find it easier personally to do all the smooth sides first and then go back and stuff the corners in later. Uh, so now I've got all of the sides. Yeah, so let me put in the corners. So this is my roof outer corner. So all of these places are now going to get roof outer corners. That's not an outer corner. That's an inner corner. So I'm going to leave that one empty. Go around and do these. And now I need that inner corner. And I just need the one of them. Okay, so that gives me that. And you know, you may decide you don't want that sharp peak on your roof. You might just leave it as it is right here. And that's totally possible. Um, you just put down whatever cladding surface type block you want in there instead of on this outside here. Instead of putting down the oak wood planks, you put hardened clay through the center. But let's carry on. Uh, put these aside. Now I'm going to do the bottom edge, so I need some of those. This is that outer corner overhang, and this is the inner corner overhang. So the same three general types of blocks. So here I'm going to go and do all of them. And it's only once I've put in the overhang next to each other around the corner that it creates that corner space where that corner block goes. And I can put that in there, and it will probably pick the right orientation. But it's a bit smarter about this sort of thing if you do it uh, at the end. And get these and that. And one of those. And that gives us 
most of the roof, and now we just need the gable part along the top. So let's get rid of these. And there's really only two gables because the gables themselves are so sm clever about arranging themselves properly that you don't need all the lots of different kinds. So first, we're just going to do the straight ones. And it doesn't matter what they look like because we're going to have to fix them with the hammer later anyway. And then we're going to do the, the hips on the corners. And these guys are a lot smarter. So you notice all three of those chose the correct orientation, whereas a bunch of these ones in the middle did not. Fortunately, just a single right click with the hammer will straighten those guys out. All right, so we should uh, be in a pretty familiar position here, right? We've got the roof recreated, and all we need to do now is get our cladding, which we don't want to be oak. We want to be hardened clay or whatever else you want to make it. And then just walk around and uh, right click all the different surfaces to cover them in the cladding of your choice. And you get 16 pieces of cladding per block, so it's slicing it pretty thin. Uh, it makes it so you can use uh, some fairly expensive materials, actually, and have it go really, really far in terms of covering your roof. Uh, and of course, you don't have to make your roof come to a sharp peak. You can stop at whatever point you might like. Uh, there was one build I did a while ago where all of the roofs were two meters tall, and then however much more space they had to cover, they were just flat the whole rest of the, the space. And that allowed me to put in skylights and other sorts of interesting things. Okay, so here we are. We've recreated this uh, cornered, gabled, smooth-sided <laughs> roof. Okay, next up, I've got a little roof with some dormer windows. And uh, these are made using pretty much the same things we just talked about over here. So I've got that inner roof corner, I've got the gabled roof ridge, and uh, that is one where I've used my hammer to right click it a few times to get it to form that shape where it's got one off in that direction, one off in that direction, one down here. This is just a regular gabled roof ridge. This is a ridge overhang we saw in the first building over there. And then uh, the inner roof, uh, there it is, the overhang end and the overhang end on the right hand side. That's just a normal block of glass. There's an inner roof corner here, which is uh, basically that corner piece there, but it's the same one we just used over there. There's another inner roof corner and another inner roof corner, which makes these windows look like they're directly next to each other. If I wanted, I could just put a regular uh, roof tile in between them and make them look a little bit further apart. And then uh, I went ahead and just put the same gabled edges and overhangs and such on both sides. So here's an example of using the same kind of cornering to make some dormer windows in the top of a house. Next up, let's talk about some of the round objects that architect, uh, architecture craft uh, allows you to make. Um, here we've got an example of four different kinds of cylinders, posts, poles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, basically, some sort of pillar that is successively smaller and smaller. And uh, you know you can use these, imagine, for pillars to a temple all the way down to the, uh, the poles holding up a, a uh, you know, house um, porch or something like that. Over here, we've got some blocks. Um, this is a round inner corner. If you make four of these together, it'll make a perfect cylinder on the inside. Here's the counterpart that makes a perfect cylinder on the outside. And then here's a quarter cylinder, so you can use a bunch of these to make a cylinder around, uh, say, the corner of four blocks. And then here's a half cylinder to do the same thing across the boundary. So basically, lots of different round shapes. So here's our friend the sphere again. But you can also get a dome, and you can get half a dome, and you can get a quarter of a dome. Over here, I've taken those round outer corners, so these guys, basically, and used the hammer to change their orientation a bunch of different times to make myself a cylinder lying on its side. So just because the natural position of those things is to face upright, you don't have to leave them that way. You can change them however you like. So uh, here, for example, you might have some interesting decorative element 
or maybe it's a tree trunk. Maybe you make it out of logs and it's a fallen tree. Whatever you want to do with it, you know, gives you the opportunity to have this great round shape. Okay, there is a reason they call it the architecture craft mod. Uh, here, we're starting to see a lot of the much more detailed architectural elements. Uh, these ones specifically from the kind of classical period, you know, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know why those are colored that way. I've tried everything to get rid of it, but I couldn't couldn't figure out how to do it. Anyway, so this is using quartz blocks and a whole bunch of different options from uh, the saw bench. On the bottom, we've got these round pillar bases and then just regular round pillars in the middle. And then three different types of capital, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian, uh, in order of least to most kind of decorative. Up here, we've got uh, metopes and triglyph corners. And here, I've got the same thing, just I use the hammer to turn them upside down so that they look like they're connecting one to the other and forming this neat pattern all the way around. And here's a triglyph corner. And again, those are turned upside down. Those are facing the regular way. Go around the side here. And then up here, I've got a, if I can get it to show up, there we go, cornice uh, on the left-hand end. And then a cornice bottom, a cornice left-hand through the middle. And then up here, a cornice ridge. And so all of these together form that triangular sort of facade. Now, unfortunately, the angles are fixed. So this is as big as it gets. You can make it no bigger or no smaller um, without getting this same pitch to the roof. So if I wanted to make my, uh, my building here nine meters tall, it's going to have to be one, two, three, four, and a little meters uh, up to the top of the roof line there. So have that in mind when you're building structures, that this is a 45 degree pitch and will make a very tall triangle if you make your building very tall. Uh, again, I left myself room to build this again, uh, but I think that uh, not really necessary. Over here though, it's worth pointing out, uh, these are regular chiseled quartz blocks, and this is a roof tile block made out of chiseled quartz with a cladding of um, the regular quartz block. And that way, the ceiling or the top of it looks the same all the way across because I made this cornice ridge and the cornice pieces out of just plain quartz blocks. But the surface on the inside here looks rather more decorated using the chiseled quartz and the pillar quartz together. And then on the inside, you can see it's just regular Minecraft blocks on the inside. So there's our classical sets of blocks. And there's a few other blocks in that classical category that I didn't use here. So you can check out the, uh, the bench to see what those are. Next up is uh, staircases and railings. So there are a bunch of staircase blocks. Uh, these are actually stairs that came off the architect's bench, uh, which allows you to rotate them. And I, I don't know why he bothered. They're basically the same thing as vanilla stairs, but yeah, whatever. Uh, he did have a couple of other options. So you can have this outer corner and this inner corner for stairs, in addition to just the regular stairs. But whatever. The really awesome thing are these banisters. There's a whole bunch of different pieces to these to get that smooth-looking single unit all together. So let's walk through them one by one. First, this is the banister end, and you place this on top of your bottommost step and it will come to a smooth, clean ending, as opposed to poking off or expecting to connect up to something else. It's a slightly different shape than this one, which is the plain banister that ends with a bit more of that overhang. So if you could see where the, the black um, outline is, you can see there's a bit of extra railing on the end there, which isn't present on this one. This one ends cleanly. Then I've got this inner banister corner, which basically is expecting to have a banister coming up from below. And so it's got a little chunk here and a little chunk here and that little teeny nub of extra banister. So it actually connects up with this guy over here. Next, I've got plain banister, then plain banister top transition. So a plain banister, you can see from one end to the other, moves straight up at a 45 degree angle 
whereas this one gets halfway and stops. And that way it transitions and connects up smoothly with your plain banisters on the top. Now this one has a newel, which is that extra thick kind of support member in the center there. This is a corner, and then this is the end of a plain balustrade. Over here, I've got the similar sort of thing, just a plain balustrade end, top transition, plain banister, plain banister bottom transition. So this, just like the top transition, allows you to smoothly flow into a floor where the banister continues. Unlike down here, where I wanted the banister to stop on that bottom step, here, I want the banister to continue. So I have a plain banister on the bottom step, and then on the floor, right in front of the banister, I have this transition so that I can carry on. And then I just cap it off at the end. But I could have put in a corner piece and had it wrap around if I wanted to. So that gives you all of your banister pieces. Now, let's look at windows. So here, I've got a window corner, a window frame, I've got a window mullion, and that connects up to some jungle blocks here, regular window frames. And that lets me introduce the next tool, the architect's chisel. Now, if you right click one of these things with the chisel, it's going to take out the glass that was in there. Uh, I'm not sure if. Yeah, that's what I thought. So you get your glass pane back again if you hit it with a chisel. In, uh, <laughs> oh, I do know a spell. There we go. Um, oops, except I wanted that. Yeah, so uh, if you then right click on the wooden part with just a plain glass pane or a stained glass pane, but it has to be one of the vanilla glass panes, it will glaze the frame itself. So the frame comes with no glass in it. You have to add that yourself. Uh, yeah, I'll take these out. Okay, now let's talk about what else this chisel does. The chisel allows you to disconnect one set of blocks from another. So what I'm doing here is basically saying this window frame doesn't talk to this window frame. They're not connected at all. And so I can do that anywhere there's an edge between window frames. I say this window frame not connected to the one next to it. Or I can right click again and reconnect them. And this is true for all of the blocks that modify their behavior to join up with the thing that's next to them. And it's especially true of windows because they have this behavior. And you often want to change your mind about what's connected and disconnected. All right, so now I can glaze each of these individually and make a different sort of appearance. A mullion is one where that split happens in the middle of the block. So you don't necessarily need to have a mullion in order to get the appearance of a mullion. But if you want the mullion, if you want that um, division in the middle of a block, then you do. So right here, I've got a plain window frame on the end, and all the rest of these are mullions. So if I start glazing these guys, you can see I've disconnected them one from the other, and now I get these teeny little half-size windows because part of it is the mullion in the center, and part of it is because I've disconnected it from the window frame that's right next to it. Um, and you can even do this, I think, yeah, with blocks that are already glazed. Uh, and if at any point you just want that glass out of there, you can just right-click it also and uh, get it back again. So that gives you the chisel and window frames. Okay, and last up, uh, we've got some arches. So first I've got a one meter diameter arch, uh, just some stone to highlight, and then this is made out of lapis. So you can see what that looks like. Good for doorways and things where you wanna add a little character. Here, we've got a two diameter arch, which is actually made up of these two pieces. And they look a lot like one of the round pieces we saw back down that way, except these ones by default will stand upright whereas those ones by default will lie flat on the ground. But making two identical pieces and then just putting them on either side of a two meter wide opening will give you a nice two meter diameter arch. And in this case, I added some slabs on the top to give them the appearance of being as thick as this one is, which is kind of a nice appearance. But if you want that same thing, you'll have to know that you have to make the slabs yourself.
Next up, we've got a three dimension, a uh, three diameter arch, a three meter diameter arch, which is made up of three parts. One is this little wedge here. One is this block with just a little curve bitten out of it. And then finally, the keystone piece at the top here, and then repeated on the other sides. So one, two, three, four, five pieces total gives you your three meter wide arch. And then finally, the four meter wide arch. Uh, it actually kind of seems like it's the same number of pieces, except you've got two middle pieces instead of the one middle piece here. So you've got the little wedge, you've got the piece with a curve kind of bitten out of it, but it's a bigger curve. And then you've got two middle pieces, so both sides are symmetric. And again, like all the, um, the even width arches, you kind of want to supplement with a slab to give it an appearance of a uh, little bit of substance to it. And that's it for architecture craft. Uh, lots of lots of great stuff in here. So you've got round pieces, which you just can't do in Minecraft. You've got very nuanced and detailed pieces, which again, you really can't do with vanilla Minecraft. Uh, lots of things to emulate classical styles, uh, more of our round pieces, and then lots of great options for making all sorts of fancy roofs, which again, you just can't do in vanilla Minecraft. So if you want to add a sense of realism to your buildings, I really can't recommend Architecture Craft highly enough. Check it out. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit like. If you want uh, to see when the next video comes out, hit subscribe, and I will talk to you later.